All right, hello everybody. Welcome to uh, our next unit here, talking about uh, President Nixon. Um, so today we're going to talk about domestic policy and President Nixon. So our objectives and standards to explain the domestic policies of the Nixon administration and to analyze domestic policies under President Richard Nixon. And take a moment there to read the standards, please. Desired result. Uh, what were the domestic policies of President Richard Nixon? So, plans of new. When he entered office in 1969, Pres uh, Richard Nixon wanted to turn the United States towards a more conservative direction. Remember that the uh, United States had been under control of John President Johnson and President Kennedy uh, for most of the 1960s, you know, uh, who were both Democratic and a little more liberal presidents. So Nixon wants to turn them back towards uh, a more conservative way. <coughs> he also had to deal with the divided country over the Vietnam War. Now, Nixon had a goal uh, to decrease the size and impact of the federal government. He believed that Johnson's Great Society programs had placed too much power in the federal government, and he was determined to give some of that power back to local and state governments. So economic power. New federalism was Nixon's plan to give more financial freedom to local governments to spend their money on what they, you know, what they wanted to. So previously, the federal government had told states and local governments how to spend their money. Under the idea of revenue sharing, these local and state governments would decide to spend the money uh, how they want it, with certain limits, of course. Uh, in 1972, the State and Local Fiscal Assistance Act became uh, passed and became a law. So reforms. Nixon also wanted to change uh, welfare. In 1969, Nixon advocated for what was known as the Family Assistance Plan, or FAP. What this meant was this. Every family of four with no outside source of income would receive a payment of $1,600 each year from the federal government. It also included a provision to earn up to $4,000 a year in supplemental income. Now, those who were unemployed... Uh, except mothers of preschool children would be required to take job training and uh, reasonable work that was offered to them. But there's going to be some trouble with this. Nixon's, uh, as Nixon proposed to plan as a reduction in the role of the federal government and to help welfare recipients become responsible for their lives, um, there is some trouble with that. Now, the bill did pass the House of Representatives. But when it reached the Senate, liberals attacked it because of low minimum payments and the idea of a work requirement. And conservatives, even people in his own party, actually attacked it because it guaranteed an income to people. So the bill was later defeated uh, in the Senate. Decisions. New federalism supported some programs and it also dismantled others to gain support from democrat from the uh, democrat controlled uh, congress he supported measures to increase federal spending uh, spending excuse me on social programs he increased social security medicare and medicaid funding and president nixon also tried to uh, get rid of some other things he tried to limit funding for the housing and urban development uh, office and tried to eliminate uh, the job corps which had been established under president kennedy he also impounded or withheld necessary funds for certain programs, such as um, uh, some of the things we've been talking about. Now, federal courts eventually ordered the release of these funds and ruled that presidential impound or the presidential withholding of funds for certain programs is unconstitutional. But Nixon was able to abolish the Office of Economic Opportunity. So battling the opposition, as Nixon fought for his agenda in Congress, he also was fighting against uh, many liberal views in society. Now, Nixon uh, had been elected to end the war in Vietnam and also to restall, restore excuse me, uh, law and order. As we know, there were a lot of protests and violence going on as a result of the war uh, at home. To achieve this, Nixon and his administration used all necessary and sometimes illegal means to do so. Uh, for example, his administration wiretapped liberal individuals and Democratic Party offices at the Watergate building in Washington, D.C., which we'll talk about later on next week. The CIA also investigated and gathered documents of people 
who opposed the policies by the government, and anti-war and civil rights groups had their tax returns audited by the Internal Revenue Service, or the IRS, and Nixon also kept a personal list of quote-unquote enemies. <clears throat> Now, tactics. President Nixon also was uh, preparing for a re-election campaign in 1972, and he wanted to create a new coalition of conservatives. And one strategy of this was called the Southern Strategy. So he tried to attract conservative Democrats in southern states by appealing to their displeasure with federal desegregation and a liberal Supreme Court. He promised to name a Southerner to the Supreme Court and to gain votes in the South. Nixon began to slow down uh, desegregation efforts, such as in schools or public facilities that had been passed um, in terms of civil rights. He had also opposed the extension of the Voting Rights Act of 1968, but uh, despite his attempt, it was extended by Congress. So court challenges. President Nixon also attempted to stop the integration of schools through busing. Busing was um, taking African-American children uh, from schools that maybe were failing or not doing well and bringing them to other uh, schools in other locations. And this was both in northern and southern states across the country. Uh, Nixon wanted to stop that. In 1971, the Supreme Court ruled in Swan versus Charlotte Mecklenburg Board of Education that school districts uh, may bus students to another school to end segregation in education. People around the country were, again, like I said, um, a lot of people weren't happy with this and they began to protest the decision. Uh, Nixon himself also opposed the decision, urged Congress to halt the implementation of this. He saw the Supreme Court as too liberal and he looked to change it. Um, Four Supreme Court justices, including Chief Justice Earl Warren, left the judicial bench, and President Nixon appointed conservative judges to the Supreme Court. And the Senate approved the nominations, including that gentleman right there, Chief Justice uh, Warren Burger, um, and the Supreme Court will become a little more conservative uh, in the 1970s. <clears throat> now, problems with the economy. Between 1967 and 1973, the U.S. faced difficult economic times. There was high inflation, high unemployment, or what we know as stagflation, uh, and this was a result of the Vietnam War and social programs under President Johnson. There were also uh, increased competition in international trade and a large amount of workers, mainly baby boomers and women, who were entering the workforce. Many of the people who had grown up in the 50s and 60s were now looking for jobs out of college or high school or whatever or from returning from war. Um, so that was also a big deal. There was also a dependency on um, foreign oil that's going to create a problem. <coughs> Excuse me. The United States received most of its petroleum from oil-producing countries in the Middle East. Uh, many Middle Eastern oil-producing countries belong to the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, or known as OPEC, and the organization gra gradually raised the price of oil in the 1960s. When the Yom Kippur War started in 1973, the United States sent military aid to Israel to fight Egypt and Syria. Uh, Syria, excuse me. In response to this, the Arab OPEC nations cut off oil sales. And when when OPEC finally decided to start selling oil to the U.S. again, the price had quadrupled. You'll, um, you can see this sign here. It's a sorry, no gas today. A lot of people saw this in many gas stations or wherever across the United States. Um, I have family members who have told me uh, who lived during this that they remember, you know, trying to get gas at gas stations. There were long lines for gas, and it was just very difficult for people to get gasoline. So I just wanted to show you this graph here. If you look here in 1970, we're starting here. Um, you can see the gradual rise of oil, right? Not, not too bad of a rise, a little slow rise. And then at number four here, uh, this is when uh, OPEC um had the oil embargo begins. So you see the sharp rise in prices, and obviously it goes up and up and up till uh, six here, uh, where it finally kind of stabilizes out. But again, you can kind of see the fluctuation of oil prices over time too. Um, but again, you can see that how sharp of an increase in oil prices and um, how that affected people. <clears throat> 
So solutions. President Nixon did take steps to fight the economic problems. Uh, he attempted to raise taxes and cut the budget, uh, but Congress refused, so Nixon is going to try other ideas. He tried reducing the amount of money that was in circulation around the country, but this led to a moderate recession. And finally, in August 1971, President Nixon used price and wage controls to fight inflation. Uh, this plan did work, but the recession did continue for a little bit. All right, so our closure here. So think about some of the domestic goals and policies of President Richard Nixon in terms of the economy or other social programs and <coughs> things like that. And that will help you uh, answer your question. Have a great rest of your day or night, and I will talk to you guys later on.